guys, what's up, Mustangs? Poo guys, welcome back to Force of Motors for 7. What's well, a bit of a challenge. Now, the Ford GT here that I might have hit a wall with. Shh, don't mention that. Um, <laughs> is undoubtedly an incredible machine, especially for being so new to the series. It only finished its second, it only finished its second championship a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. At, uh, what is it called? Brian? I don't know how to pronounce it. And, uh, overall it got third. It was pretty good showing, especially considering in the entire season, it only got to raise at maximum potential once due to the, what is it called? The equivalence of technology crap they use, which is essentially vehicular doping in order to get, or it rigs the game, basically, <clears throat> in order to get more views and have other people win, because... It is true that you don't want <coughs> one team winning all the time. And, at least in real life, and according to the Daytona Endurance Prototype drivers, they say the other cars have absolutely no shot against this vehicle without the homologation system, without the um, equivalent system. At least that's what the drivers say in real life. The question is, how would that fare in Forza? Now, Obviously, we don't have the entire lineup. However, I decided to focus on the four, on the three other key players: Austin Martin, Ferrari, and Chevy. Porsche, yeah, Porsche kind of um struggled. They tried something new. They tried a mid-engine car, and that didn't really work with them. I think I don't I don't think they won a single race, and I don't think they finished them on either. They might have. I'm not sure, but I do not recall a race they won. <laughs> So, I didn't, I didn't include them, partially because I didn't have the car, and other because, otherwise because they're not very competitive right now. So yeah, I focus on these big four, and I set out doing uh, three different races. Now, the first race would be at Laguna Seca. And, uh, it's very hectic. Each car had, each vehicle had six of them in the race. So there were six Corvettes, six Ford, six Ferraris. I got a little bit of a bump, and I immediately ended up in all of the awesome arms, <laughs> four of them, in, right in front of me. Yeah, it was rather chaotic on the first lap or two, which is good. Produced some very good racing. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing this race. Lots of overtaking, lots of defending. Um, the awesome arms are the, are the slightly faster vehicle in a straight line. The Ford decided to pit, try to use my teammate, decided, decided to pit maneuver me, lost place with the uh, other Ford that is now in front of me as he runs wide. I was still looking at the back of all of the awesome arms, and I go around the outside of three of them to get a little bit on the dirt, but I do go around um, three awesome arms in one corner, and now I'm looking at the back of a Corvette. And. Yeah, I tried to go too wide in the carousel, that's not, I guess, or not carousel. I need to go jump off a bridge now, because that's not the right name of this corkscrew. I need to go, okay, excuse me, I need to go jump off a bridge, but... <laughs> no. Yeah, it was it was good fun racing. It, it, there was lots of action, pretty much everyone in the field, and... I was... I, in my effort to go past the carousel, the Corvette might have got a tap. I didn't, I didn't... I don't think I touched the Corvette, but anyway, it got a slide. And it lost a few places. So I do apologize if I did hit it. Didn't mean to, but, you know, that's just racing sometimes. Also, lots of fire was being spent. And then I tried to go too, too wide through here. Didn't quite get make it work. Didn't quite have the group for that. But, you know, it, it's worth a shot. I, was, I continued to go after the Austin Martin up here. Yeah, good fun racing. Lots of racing, lots of action. And I, uh, yeah, I had a look at this guy for a very long time. You see how close I am to him. I go around on the, I go on this side, I'm going to go on the outside again, however, uh, the Ford gets in my way, but I do manage to just about keep my position, only for the acceleration of the Austin Martin to take it back from me. <laughs> so I go around the outside of the Austin Martin again, and um, have to take avoiding action to avoid running in my friend up there. <laughs> yeah, lots of hectic racing, lots of good racing. At the front here was a Ferrari 458. I went with the GTLM version instead of the GTE just because, well, GTL and GT Le Mans. So yeah, this is a Ferrari F458 Le Mans car. 
And it started on pole and pretty much ran away from the field for most of the races. It's still on lap one. It's about to go on lap two and now. You can see how much of a gap it had to the second place on Corvette and third place Austin Martin. Got a fair old bit of a gap going on. Yeah, it was rather lonely for him for a while. Things did heat up eventually. I had to work my way up into fifth place right now looking at the back of another Corvette. And I decided to go for a big dive in the first corner and I was a little bit of on the curb. But I still did manage to pull it off. Corvette ended up running wide. And, uh... Would soon be seeing the back of another Ford GT. And uh, once again, I was left to go chase after the Osmar. Got a little bit of a slide. These vehicles are rather slidey in the low speed corners. Simply because of the whole rear wheel drive, lots of power nature of them. So, yeah. Rather slidey machines. And yeah, I was just left to go chase after that Austin Martin, and I knew that this area up here would be the prime opportunity. He was a little bit slow through there, that's where I took my opportunity. The AIs just do not know how to carry speed through there. And once again, you can see the speed, it kind of evens out. And then, we go really scary, and we go too wide, into the corkscrew. And somehow, we both make it out of there alive. I was not expecting that to work in any way, shape, or form, but you know what? It worked. <laughs> That was, I, I'm very proud of that overtake. I was not expecting that to work. I was kind of, you know, gonna try it again. Didn't work on the Corvette. Let's see how it goes to the Austin Martin. And it worked like a charm. Uh, so I was making pretty steady progress in the field. You see I'm already in third. Got a wheel spin. I clipped the back of the uh, Corvette. That got me some wheel spin. And slowed me down a little bit. But I was hoping to catch him before the braking zone. Uh, couldn't quite do it. I got there. I got right on the back of him. Right on his bumper. As, um, all the brake discs are on fire. And, yeah, I just had to basically look at the, uh, back of a Corvette for a fairly long time. It was a six-lap race. No pit stops or anything like that. Just six laps. Um, co um, cosmetic damage. Just see how the vehicles can race around a relatively all-around track. I picked well, I pick Laguna Seca because... It's one of the better racetracks in this game, I would argue. One of the better racetracks in the world. And it's just a ton of fun to go around. Produces very good racing. And, uh, you can see, I, once again, I go... That's my, that was my favorite overtaking spot on the entire track. That one corner right there. Now, Corvette, uh, a little bit further down the field, was trying to hold off um, some Austin Marms. Corvettes were not doing too well. This Corvette was under fire. Managed to defend going into that uh, my favorite overtaking spot. But you can just see how fast, how fast the Austin Martins are as the one pulls away in his efforts to defend it. And that guy's right on his bumper immediately after that. Not quite going to get him into the corkscrew, but he did lose the back end on the corkscrew somehow. Didn't lose too many positions on that. He only lost one, but he was once again immediately under fire from another Austin Martin and a Ferrari behind that. He was building a bit of a train. Because now the GT is kind of joining them. Um, yeah, it was... The, the Corvettes weren't doing too well. And neither were the Ferraris in that instance, other than the one in the front of the lead, which because it was on pole. And you just see how fast the Austin Mars are compared to the rest of the field. He was going to try and go on the inside, but ran out of room. And he isn't quite going to go for a dive. He thought about it, but not quite going to go for it. And yeah, the Ferrari is still right there with him. And you can see all the cars that that, that one Corvette is just pulling everybody up. And yeah, the Corvettes were struggling. They were not. They were not doing too well. As for me in second place, well, I was still looking at the back of a Ferrari. I had caught up this probably the fourth or fifth lap. I do make a move. Going on the outside, getting a good run on there, but I couldn't quite make it stick. He's oh, too wide once more. He breaks late and will manage to get the position. However, I do I did tap him, so I got and so I, I was originally gonna let him wait, but then I got some wheel spin, so I decided to go anyway. And that allowed the Austin Martin to catch up with the Corvette in tow, and the Austin Martin proceeded to mount the Ferrari as soon as he got to the corner, and the four and the uh. Um, Corvette would get right next to the Ferrari, only to be ditched by everyone, and I would inherit the lead. Yeah, 
I didn't really, again, I didn't mean to touch the core with there, it's just racing, and he, again, got sideways. I'm not sure if that's just an AI thing, apparently, in that corner, or if I actually had anything to do with that, but, <clears throat> yeah. I was gonna wait up, then I got some wheel spin, so I decided to go anyway. Kind of acted as a wait up in terms of, like, politeness, just, just because, and I was, I was kept relatively just by the Austin Martin, but the, once I got ahead of him, I really couldn't do anything about it. Because the GT was, uh, pretty good. Pretty good indeed. And it would be, uh, the Ford GT that would take victory. However, interestingly, each manufacturer was represented in the top five. With the Austin Martin coming in second, the Ferrari coming home in third, and the Corvette coming home in fourth. It was quite interesting. Made for a very good, uh, photo at the end having all the cars lined up like that now I thought that was very cool but yeah it would be the GT that would eventually take victory lap time excluding mine just because the AIs are the AIs they are unbeatable lap times were very similar but overall GT would claim victory for the second race we went to uh well Le Mans obviously and I turned on fuel and tire simulation not quite full of damage for reasons you'll see very soon. Um, because, well, an awesome arm spun and everyone crashed. Numerous vehicles, I think probably seven or eight vehicles were involved in that accident. And awesome arm got spun in the dirt. Did not go very well for the awesome arm. However, I and a few other vehicles didn't make it through okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll be on our way. I was playing with a Ferrari and two Corvettes. Ferrari was running wide and proceeded to go off the track, so I went in here at that position. Another GT was going too wide with the Corvette. And then we realized just how fast those Ferraris were. I'm in the slipstream right now. I can't catch it. The Corvette was the slowest vehicle here. I was the second slowest, apparently. And the Austin Arms and Cor- and Tor- and Ferraris, I know my cars, are absolute rocket ships. I mean, these cars aren't slow, it's about 180 miles an hour, it's no slouch. However, the Ferraris and Austin Martins are so fast, it is unbelievable. It's crazy how fast these cars are. And... Yeah, it's very peculiar. Because you see how fast that guy caught up in the back, so now I'm in a Ferrari sandwich with an Austin Martin coming to join him very quickly. I am going to get the braking maneuver completed. You can see the Ferrari just leaves me. I am lucky enough to be in the slipstream enough to not get mugged down the straightaway completely, but you can see there's a Ferrari on my back, there's a Ferrari on my front. The Austin Martin's coming to join in again. And, uh, yeah, I managed to get the overtake done on the Corvette, and then I had to defend very hard for the second half, or for the third half of Le Mans straight, because, um, these cars are, Le Mans is obviously a very heavy street circuit when it comes to straight line speeds, and the GT lacks it a little bit. You see the Ferrari pass it like it's in neutral. It just says, I'm going by, and that is the end of it. I did have a slight lockup. Managed to get the inside, though. And then once again, the Ferrari comes and just flies past me. I do try to get in the slipstream. Absolutely no hope. He is gone. <laughs> and, uh, this rigor roll will go on for a fair few laps. Just the Corvette's being outclassed by everyone. The GT's being outclassed in the straights, so you can see Austin Martin behind us. And the Ferraris and G Austin Martin's being outclassed around the corner. So, in the first half, the GT was awful. Just anywhere from the start line to the end of the second long straightaway, the GT falls a mile behind. Same thing with the Corvette. But, as soon as you get to these corners, the GT absolutely destroys everybody. And, um, I, I did try going on the outside of a fellow GT. Didn't quite make it work, but 
Yeah, I was still very much on the hunt, and I could actually slipstream off these guys, because they were relatively similar speeds. And once again, the awesome Martin is coming very, very quickly. I do have to go of take avoiding action in order not to crash and die. Uh, yeah, they might have braked later or earlier than I expected, so the awesome Martin did get the place only to immediately lose it following his early braking. So, yeah, it was very, very chaotic. Once again, it would be a Ferrari leading the way with the GT close behind after the first lap. It was a four-lap race, one mandatory pit stop, and once again, simulate or simulation tire wear and fuel wear. It's asking you the thing, fuel wear. And yeah, the GT and the Ferrari was winning with a GT in second, I believe, and Austin Martin in third. I was still a fair way back on this fight. I was still fighting with the other cars. I think around 10th place I was fighting. So, yeah, um, very hectic opening lap, very hectic, had a few crashes, wasn't ideal, but we did all make it through, and the fuel began to get spread out a little bit more, as you can see by these top four being separated by a fair old bit. Heading on long straight was me with a Ferrari to draft off of, and you can see, if I'm close enough for the draft, I do not get mugged, I'm, I'm fast enough to not get mugged down the straight with if I'm in the draft of the Ferrari. You can see he is gradually pulling away, but he's not pulling away fast enough to get me out of the slipstream, so I'm still able to keep up with him enough, and then my superior brakes can give him a little bit of a tap heading into the first uh, bus stop, but I do go on around the outside. I do make the position stick, only for us to bump walls, and uh, then have to go too wide, and that doesn't work. So once again, I get in the slipstream. And you can see the Austin Martin is, um, well, again, passing me like I'm in neutral, just buh bye passing the Ferrari, too. So the Austin Martin is the fastest of the four. So I start drafting the Austin Martin, who starts drafting the Ferrari. And there's another Austin Martin coming up the company, and they all break very early. I almost run into the back of the um, Ferrari once more, but I do maintain my position from the Austin Martin. Knock a few cones over, it's fine. Heading into the second straightaway, heading to the end of the first straightaway, sorry, which is the entrance to the second straightaway. And I'm beginning to form a bit of a train. <laughs> you know the Corvette in the first race? Yeah, that was me. I, I was that Corvette now. Because you can see there's two Austin Martins that are eager to get past me, and I'm eager to cast this Ferrari up here. You see, there's actually there's three Austin Martins now. They're like Velociraptor, they hunt in packs. But, yeah, you can just see the Ferraris is gone. I, the GT had no answer around the, in the straights, and power, if I could defend here, I could hold off the Austin Martin so they couldn't pass me. But, you can see, it was um very much a defending race up until this point. And once I get to this point, I can begin advancing instead of defending. <coughs> so... Yeah, the pit strategy was beginning to uh, get interesting, because after the first lap, we were all heading... A lot of people decided to go in on the second lap. A lot of drivers went in on the second lap. And you can see I am closer than in the Ferrari. I've closed up a lot, but once again, he pulls away like I am in neutral. Yeah. Wasn't particularly good for the GT. Uh, Austin Marks are a fair little bit behind. And this is when people begin to implement their pit strategies. And the Ferrari had extended his lead in the front and went into the pits, along with pretty much everyone else. The camera got very confused with what to do. E extremely confused with what to do. Yeah, camera was expecting them to be on the track, and they were in the pits. They did, the camera did eventually find the Ferrari. Took it a little while, but it did find the Ferrari, and then it's kind of hiding. I, you will see me come up pretty quickly. That was not me. The next one should be me. Yeah. So, they were all entering the pits. I decided to stay out. I thought, well, it's a four minute lap, roughly. So, I'm going to stay out, do my pit stop on the last lap, and, uh, hopefully, um, ignore that. That, yeah, the Ferraris can apparently phase through Austin Mars. Who knew? Very handy tool, they really should use that more when they're overtaking people. It'll make overtaking a lot easier. But they were eventually released. 
into the air a fair old bit behind. My strategy did pro propel me into the lead, however I had a problem. I was on the straight and I had no one to draft off of and there was an angry pack of Austin Marg heading my way. So, yeah, you can see um, the predicament that I'm in. So, I managed to hold him off in the first sector. I got a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a breather from the first chicane. But the Austin Marns are just so fast. It's unreal how fast they are around these corners. My car had suffered a bit of damage. I was... I didn't have too many problems with tire wear. Tire wear and fuel was not a problem in this race. This is lap three. So... Yeah, I was three laps now. I was probably ten minutes in on this. And you can just see how much the Austin Marns caught up. In that one tiny little stretch, he caught up a good couple hundred meters, if not a thousand feet. So, I was very concerned. Very concerned. And, this is pretty much how the rest of the lap would go. I'm frantically holding on with the Austin Martins. I did give him space, he was relatively close to me. <clears throat> Wasn't sure if he was going to get the move done, but he fell back into the line, so... I did keep my position into the first corner. However, the second straight is here, and the Austin Martin was not being cowardly this time. Yeah, he shot off well ahead of me, like a freaking cannon. The other guy was coming up very quickly, but he had already missed his opportunity. He wasn't going to try and pass me anymore. So now it was my task to try and catch the lunatic Austin Martin ahead of me in the um, twisty section. And the Austin Martin... It was not, it wasn't the best of the corners that goes to the GT, but it also was still very good through the corners. It wasn't the best, but it was very good. So, I do close up, you can see here, but then, gee, we have another long straight away, and he absolutely is gone. So, he just becomes a speck in the distance, <clears throat> and I'm left to try and catch said speck in the distance while still trying to maintain an eye on the car behind me to see how he goes from a speck to a bumper. <laughs> Didn't run wide this time on that corner, so I am a, I'm a fair little bit faster than this section. I was being a little bit cautious. Right now I was in second place, I was pretty happy with that. I didn't want to blow it. And um, let's just say things got scary entering the pit lane. I, Cause I was going full racing speed. And so is he, until the pit lane. Then he braked really, really early into the pit lane. And in my fear, I had to essentially overtake him on the pit lane. And you see, now all the drivers who didn't pit on the second lap have to pit this lap. So, once again, this time it's my turn to be in the pits. And now it's just a race to pray then I wasn't going to lose my first place. Cause I managed to get in the pits first through a, a tad bit of cheating, but didn't really mean to. <clears throat> so I go into the pits, I do my little rigmarole, and I was desperately hoping that the Ferraris would not come flying by, because that was a fairly long pit stop. And you might... And there goes the Ferrari. And that was, so that was first place gone. And now I enter in third place. <clears throat> Which I guess isn't bad. But, you know. I was over for hire. <laughs> so, in the front was the Ferrari for fighting. You can see me in second place. I'm really pushing it, really pushing it <clears throat> to catch up to that guy. This would be the finishing order of the race. Try as I might, I did get past the second Ferrari, but wasn't quite enough. I did leave a nice open door when I passed that Ferrari for the Austin Martin to slip through to, which was a problem because I was really hoping a Ferrari would hold up the Austin Martin. So I did have to do some defending on the Austin Martin. But, despite my best efforts, the finishing order would be, would be Ferrari, Ford, and Austin Martin. 
Now, I wasn't able to tune the car in any way because I was, one, renting it. I don't own the car because it's a crappy endurance race you have to do in order to get the car. And uh, I probably could have done some tuning on it to make it faster, but that would also be cheating. So it would be a Ferrari that does take victory at the Le Mans circuit. A little unhappy about that, but that's just what happens. I tried, I closed up a lot, you will see. I did close up a fair little bit, but not quite enough. For the final event, it'll be a best of three in a drag race for one mile. Now, I had some problems stalling the car, like no matter what I did, it would stall out. <coughs> it is better. <coughs> yeah, you can see the GT, um, the cars up there just screw off. I missed the shift slightly. Come on! Can I catch, can I get a third place? Ignore the GT on the right, that doesn't mean anything, that car isn't really supposed to be there. I am pulling, oh come on, it's gonna be close, it'll be close. Come on, come on, ah! If I didn't miss that shift, it's a good thing we have a best of three, yeah, the Austin Martin and Ferrari are gone. Absolutely gone. Yeah, Austin Martin, Ferrari, Chevy, Ford. Mainly because I missed the show. I was closing very quickly. That was less than a hundredth of a second between us. That was, that was, that was good. That was good. Ring try. Uh, yeah. I did manage to fix the problem. My car not stalling for whatever reason. When I started on unbeatable, on unbeatable difficulty, the car would just stall no matter what I did, and it was very peculiar. But second round, let's not mess up that shit. Didn't even mess it up too bad. Just... Come on. Come on. We're neck and neck, me and the Corvette. We are neck and neck. I think I am slightly faster. Oh, this is so close between me and the corner. I think I am pulling on him, though. Yes, I am. There we go. Just beat him. Okay. Now let's see if we can repeat that result. And again, ignore the stupid car on the right, the GT. It's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a four-car race, but whatever. Clearly, the game doesn't know how to count. Yeah, the... Austin Martin and... Ferrari are just gone. Just absolutely gone. So, yeah, this will be interesting. The final race, I want to see if I can get my third place again. I am on the podium in the drag racing world, but... Here we go. That is a very cool lineup. That, is, that was a very cool lineup. I... Missed up my shift. I was looking to the left. Damn it! I let the car down. I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah, that was not a good run on my part. Again, I do have incredible closing speed on this guy, but yeah, that was my fault. I missed shift. I do apologize. And then the AI does not a break, but whatever. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the Austin Martin pulled a very good time. Those two were three times of a second off. Austin Martin won by a fair old landslide. So what kind of conclusions can we draw? Well, first off, we can conclude that racing these cars is incredibly fun. And, uh, yeah, it's very close between them in lap time. However, in the real world, the, uh, the GT is the superior vehicle. In Forza, it just doesn't have the straight line speed. The Austin Martin Ferrari will absolutely annihilate it down the straightaway. So you can see on the drag race and at Le Mans. Now on the corners, the GT is faster than them, but it's not fast enough to make up for it. That's why I got second at Le Mans. And, yeah, I mean, they're all incredible machines. The Corvette, I think, has been riding off of the um, Equilibrium uh, performance for a long time because they haven't done anything with their car major upgrade-wise. But, yeah, overall, it's a very...
competitive field, and if only they got rid of that uh, equivalence of technology, we can actually see in real life how these cars would truly perform in their natural settings. But without that, Forza will have to do, and I think I got to award the win to Ferrari. It came, it was, a, it was the only vehicle besides the Ford to win a race, besides the drag race, and it came second in the drag race, third at Le Mans, and, and third at Laguna as well. So, yeah, it's very good to the corners, and it's also pretty darn good in a straight line as well. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode of Forza Motorsports. I'll be back with more.